the prayers that were coming from the group really, really helped me. They really helped me. I remember there was uh, one uh, prayer that was sent by yourself in the group. Um, I think that was in March. All these things that I'm going through, you have the power to move everything, every obstacle. And I refuse to fail. I will not fail because you, my God, are the one that blesses everybody. Everybody that has everything to do with success, it's you that was there for them. So why won't you be there for me? And that that prayer for me really helped me. And I kept playing it in the house in the morning when I wake up. I would cite, I actually cited it. I would speak to it. Welcome to another episode filled with inspiration and faith on the wonders of God. I am your host, K. Rose, and today we are privileged to have a truly remarkable guest with us, the Honorable Subleta. In this special episode, we will journey through the chapters of Honorable Subleta's life, exploring her early years, the challenges she overcame, and the pivotal role that prayer played in shaping her extraordinary path. So dear listeners, prepare to be inspired by a story that is so powerful, you'll be so amazed. So grab your tea and let's go ahead and get started. Honorable Suvera, how are you? It's nice to have you. Thanks, Kay. I'm all right. Very excited to be here. Um, uh, when you told me that I need to feature on your program um, to share my um, history um, from childhood to now, I was very excited because, I mean, uh, these are some of the stories that uh, many uh, women are missing to listen to just to encourage them. And uh, when you explained to me what uh, this program is all about, I was very excited and I'm happy to be here. So excited. Perfect, perfect. I'm excited as well. Extremely excited to have you here. I'm so honored actually to have you here, my dear sister and my dear Honorable. Uh, so could you just begin by giving our audience a brief introduction to who you are, then take us back to childhood in Lusaka, Zambia. What were some of the challenges you faced growing up and how did you overcome them? Thanks, Kay. Um, the challenges are so many. Um, I would love to be as uh, open as I can be. So just to encourage a sister out there, um, I'm coming from a broken home uh, to begin with. Um, I was raised by my mother uh, who had uh, or has still three kids, three children. I'm the only girl um, of three children. Um, I have an elder brother and a young brother. And um, I must say that uh, it wasn't uh, a good ride um, growing up because of course uh, we are coming from a broken home and um, a mother bringing up uh, three children on her own and uh, not having um, uh, enough resources to uh, cater for all the needs for the kids, you know, um, uh, putting a hot meal on the table and uh, education as well because um, my dad actually divorced my mother when I was five years old. Um, my brother, my elder brother was about uh, eight. My younger brother was about two. So she divorced um, my father, not that she really wanted to, but uh, because of um, abuse. And of course, uh, from the stories that she puts up across to us is that she never went through uh, physical abuse, but mental abuse, you know, um, there's a lot of things that go on um, in our culture, uh, where we are, where it's um, actually uh, not allowed in some families that a woman must, 
must stand up against a man. But I'm very happy uh, to mention that my mother is a very strong woman and uh, everything that I am is actually um, a dedication of a hard work. And um, yeah, so she left my, my dad when I was five years old. Of course, we struggled through um, from what she tells us. We, we did uh, had um, a hard life for, for, for us to actually get to a, a moment when we could actually realize that uh, uh, life is not as easy when we, we, we were teens and everything. And she fought through. So this is um, a mother who only got married as a young uh, lady uh, immediately after she graduated from a high school and um, she didn't have any trade. So even when she left her family, um, her husband, she had to fend for her children, uh, of course, not with a decent job, a formal job. So she um, went through a lot of things. So really, my um, background is a very humble uh, beginning. And um, from the time that uh, uh, my mother left my, my, my dad, um, we joined, of course, my grandmother um, from the Copper Belt into Lusaka. And uh, my grandmother and mom's siblings were there for us, of course. And we, we, we know that and appreciate it a lot because, you know, the African families, we are actually very close. There is no uh, demarcation of where this child uh, belongs to and where um, uh, uh, cousins uh, are coming from. When you're in a grandmother's house, you are all one. You eat the same meal, you eat from the same plate and everything. So that is how my uh, growing uh, was. Um, and up until when I was in grade uh, um, nine, junior high school here, um, I was sent into boarding, did my uh, junior secondary into boarding. Um, and I, of course, didn't like it because I grew up with my mother like I was the only girl. So she really kept me close to her. And when I was in uh, junior secondary school, I didn't like it that I was actually away from a mother that kept me very close to her, um, uh, mentoring me and everything. So up at uh, um, high school in uh, grade 10, I asked her that I wanted to move into uh, day school. There was, of course, a bit of argument because you see uh, at her stage, uh, she thought that when we go into boarding school as a kids, it was kind of relief for her to uh, uh, upgrade herself in so many different areas of life, you know. So it was um, a time that she needed to upgrade herself and everything. So when she left that, like I said, that she was only um, a high school graduate when she got married. She now went into college when I was uh, at uh, primary school and she got her first formal job when I was in grade eight, somewhere there. Um, uh, of course, the pay was, was quite good because you see, uh, Kay, God works in so many miraculous uh, ways. And she was blessed to get that job. She managed to take us into high school and uh, uh, progress herself uh, to go into uh, a different career where she went into college to do her human resource uh, career. And whilst we're in school, um, in boarding, she was also in school. So it was like relief for her that the kids are not around her. And uh, she pushed she push so hard for her to graduate um, in her uh, college whilst we're in high school. So I asked, actually asked her that she should move me out of uh, boarding school. Uh, I should get into uh, day school. And so we agreed that uh, once I do better in my uh, junior um, examinations, then I would move into my uh, day schooling which which I did uh, manage to do that. So according to what we agreed on, she moved me into uh, um, day school. So I graduated from high school 
from Kablonga girls, from Kablonga girls. Of course, she also graduated from whatever uh, uh, her, her uh, uh, college. And um, she she was, of course, getting um, uh, promotions at school, so at, at her office. So as we were growing as our kids from uh, one level to another, she was also progressing. Uh, that's how uh, God was blessing us. And um, once uh, she graduated from uh, college, she actually got herself a better position in the organization where she was. And she managed to send us to college as well. So I graduated from uh, uh, Zika's with uh, computer science. Uh, I think that's my humble beginning. Wow, thank you so much for sharing that glimpse into your background. Your mother is so strong. And I'm so glad she was able to leave her abusive husband. You see, most people think that emotional abuse is okay. Oh, no, I have to stay married for the sake of my children. Not knowing that, you know, even if your husband is not physically abusing you, it can actually affect the children. You know, you're going through all kinds of emotions. You're depressed because someone is emotionally abusing you, calling you names. Depression kills. I'm so, so glad that she was able to leave. And not only that, she was extremely smart. She sent you to boarding school. And then she used that time also to, to better her life. She went to school. God is truly amazing. Now, let's dive deeper into your journey. I know you mentioned your mother's hard work in supporting the family. How did her dedication shape your values and dreams for your future? Well, you see, um, what she did for her children actually depicts a strong woman for me. And um, her character is one that um, I would really love to share with uh, the listeners uh, of this program because it is her dedication to the decisions that she made because if you make a decision and you're not focused um, you will not be able to succeed in life and so it is what we decide because sometimes I think um, um, God speaks to us and uh, whispers to us on uh, what decisions we should take but many times we try to ignore what God is trying to say to us and for me, what uh, my mother did um, to separate us from a father was not um, out of a selfish being, but uh, she listened, I think, to the inner voice that actually spoke to her to say, this is a decision you must take because I've given you these children. You need to take care of them. This this is life, you know. We're so young, and um, the decision that she made so many times, people will look at you and say, "Oh, she 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 actually left her husband uh, because she's not a strong woman or whatever it is." But she stood firm, and uh, she she took up that decision on her own. Not anybody coming to tell her that she must do that, or because maybe her kids are uh, grown up and they're able to tell her we can't live here. Dad is not a good person, but she did it for us. And I can tell you, uh, Kay, that if she didn't do that, I would not be where I am today because at the moment, to cut the story short, we are actually the ones that are taking care of our dad who never even did any little thing, any single thing for us. Uh, but because of a person that she is, she actually showed me the importance of loving a person and not uh, hating them because of their behavior, their character, but understanding that they are um, a God's creation, you know? And so this is your dad. Even now she keeps saying, you know what? Even if your dad didn't do anything for you, I fought for you guys, but look, this is your father and whatever you can do for him, do it. I have no um, reservations, just, just go ahead and help and everything. And I'm proud to say that we are actually taking care of our dad who never actually did anything for us from the time that I was five. And I'm very proud of him because he's my dad. I mean, people make mistakes and we need to understand that uh, mistakes are actually made by uh, human beings. And um, I have no um, 
choice, but to understand that we are all human beings and we make mistakes. And I wasn't there when the mistakes were being made. Of course, I love my mother dearly. And sometimes I feel like even when I'm helping my dad with uh, what is requesting from myself and my siblings, uh, should we tell mom about it? But she goes ahead and say, just says, just do it. He's your father and you need to help him. So really um, being a mother that she, she is and uh, the love that she showed to the family actually has shaped me to be uh, a, a people's person. I'm actually uh, referred to as a mother, uh, a merciful mother, because I I understand the importance of uh, helping a, another person. And I think that is one of the things that I've come to learn from uh, uh, my mother. So she's inculcated the values in me that I need to actually appreciate every other person out there because without people around us, I mean, Kay, um, at that particular time when my mother left my 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 dad would be not uh wouldn't be where we are today so it's very important um to actually appreciate the people around you and the values that my mother has put in me is that uh, I should appreciate uh people around me um also humility is very important in one's life and that has actually built and give me the dream for the future. And the reason why I'm here is because of understanding that the people around you are important and also consideration of uh, people around you is very, very important. Wow, wow. I personally know your mom, and to be honest, she's such a wonderful woman of God. Yeah, so I'm not even surprised that she would tell you to forgive your dad. And you see, sometimes, once you know who you are in the Lord as a child of God and you know the power of forgiveness, it's actually a gift that you give to yourself. You're not really punishing the other person by not talking to them, by not supporting your dad. Well, at least you can just respect him that, you know what, he's my father. He made his own mistakes and I'm still going to move on with my life and talk about humility. Your mom is such a gem. I love, love your mom. Uh, like I said, she has a heart of God. And I can now see that in you sitting here talking to you. You're definitely a photocopy of your mom. And I'm just so glad that she still does values. Mm -hmm. So can you share some of the pivotal moments or life lessons from your early years that continue to inspire you up to today? Well, um, what inspires me is a woman um who begins her life from where my mother began her life alone with her kids. That really inspires me because um, I really um, feel a woman is everything in the world. You know, of course, we women um, are said to uh, hold the sky, um, not because we are a majority in the world, but... Uh, because we carry so many things uh, in our hearts. We carry so many things in our hands. And when they say we hold the world, it's not that we are holding the clouds, but um, as a woman, uh, I'm a mother to everybody. And I carry the burden of every human being out there as a woman. Uh, we have a soft spot. I think that is just how God created us. And so um, when uh, we are talking about the characteristics of a woman, we are talking about a woman, or once a woman like other uh, um, uh, uh, statements are said of a woman, uh, when you educate a woman, you educate the, the village. It's, it's some of those things that actually uh, describe the characteristics of a woman. And what I have learned from my mom is simply that um, what, where she has put me today uh, is not just for my children, because now I've got children. Uh, it's for the children in this, in this um, um, uh, world, in this, in this country. And that has actually led me to do so many different things, so many different uh, 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 colors that I'm wearing now are not because of uh, what I've gone through, but a woman, you know, 
a woman is very important in each and every human uh, or living uh, uh, thing in this in this world. You know, I always give examples of, um, you know, here in Africa, uh, specifically in Zambia, K, okay, you find stray dogs around uh, in the in the areas of the neighborhood, and when you see kids chasing up a stray dog. You, you you actually have to park your vehicle and ask the kids, why are you doing that? You know, not because uh, that is your dog, but it's a living thing that you need to feel for and you need to actually uh, care for. So that is one of the things and values that I'm, 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 I've been, uh, um, I mean, groomed with uh, by a parent who's been a single mother. Very, very important. Wow, what a wonderful response. Yeah, it's actually true. If you educate a woman, you actually educate a nation. You know, when girls are educated or women, when they're educated, their countries become stronger and more prosperous because that's how, that's how God created us. We, we love to nature. We love to see things grow. We raise children. We nature them. So let's dive into your early entry into politics. I know you went after you graduated, after you graduated high school, a couple longer girls, and you went to college. And after college, and I'm sure that's when you ventured into politics. What really motivated you to pursue this career path? And what were your initial experiences like? Well, what motivated me, Kay, is a woman. Um... In my neighborhood, of course, uh, when I graduated, um, I, I I got myself, um, of course, uh, a job at uh, a quite a, a big institution, one of the institutions in Zambia. And uh, of course, I appreciate <laughs> that my mother actually managed to take me to college and um, uh, gave me a lot of encouragement for me to always look back where I'm coming from and never to forget where I'm coming from. Because if she was a nobody at the time that she was taking me to school and she was a somebody at the time I was in uh, college, of course, she had to always uh, take me back to where we are coming from. So I, need, I needed to understand um, the responsibilities uh, that she expected from me, even when I went into college. You know, so um, I think that really motivated me because if my mother really wanted, she would have said, look, I've brought you in life. You need to fend for yourselves and I need to look at what I have to do myself. But she went through a lot for her to actually get to uh, where we are today. And uh, this uh, now uh, directs me to a woman out there in the community because look, um, Zambia is a developing country, not to say uh, bad things about it, but there's a lot of um, uh, uh, things that we need to do to help develop this country. Our women, many of them are out there doing uh, actually informal business. And um, where I am today, we are talking about bringing women into uh, formal business. So what are we doing about that? So these women in informal business, K, are uh, women that I see a woman on the street selling vegetables, selling fruits with a baby on her, her back. And uh, at the end of the day, she's maybe only knocking off with uh, $5, uh, which is just about a hundred kwacha of what she has sold from the vegetables that she's put on the street or on her makeshift. So really, what will a $5 do for her and her children? Uh, besides that, we'll say she's only taking care of her children with that $5 end um, uh, 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 that she has in a day. Maybe that actually includes the husband who is just at home doing nothing, but uh, just waiting for her to come back with that $5 so she can feed the family. And so that really motivated me. And I thought that these women really need a voice that can speak for them. Uh, and uh, I joined politics specifically because of uh, those women, the underprivileged uh, women. And so when I went into politics, um, of course, I've got different uh, people, role models that I have seen who've really helped women uh, in politics, uh, through politics. 
and things like that. So when I went into politics, of course, um, I started with helping my neighborhood um, at some point uh, when the campaigns had started for actually uh, for me to aspire as a member of parliament. I was pregnant for my last child, the third one, and uh, I didn't have enough time to actually go and campaign out there. But I thought uh, I should help out and educate the women who are in informal business to actually help them get into formal business. So I went with a strategy to actually educate them on how they can uh, uh, improve their business, uh, 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 their businesses. And so I went into uh, community markets and also I started uh, a project where I would collect uh, uh, used clothes, secondhand clothes, uh, in the community, also collect um, uh, books in the community and just donate to schools, especially also uh, the sanitary towers. So I started with that as well. I called out to sponsors that could help a girl child to just have a sanitary tower in uh, schools, uh, in community schools, also donate those books that we're collecting into uh, community schools and also um, venture into uh, uh, the vegetable uh, farming for those women that were actually selling vegetables at markets. I had to make them understand that it is very important that the backyard that you have, you could actually grow vegetables and take those vegetables to your makeshift at the end of the day. So you have less uh, stress of you trying to look for a small capital to go and buy your vegetables from a huge uh, farmer and take them to your makeshift. So just do the growing of vegetables behind your, your, your backyard. And that really worked well. And everybody just bought into the idea that I, I brought into the community. They were very excited about it and it worked for everybody. The books were helping, the sanitary towels were helping, and other other things that uh, we helped with in the in the community. Because um, in uh, my political life, uh, Kay, I must say that I've learned a lot of things. Uh, we take life for granted, and uh, if you feel uh, or you see your kids going to school to better schools, you must always remember and think about that child that is at home because they need to walk a kilometer to go to school, uh, uh, so, so many kilometers to go to school. Some are unable to walk, especially the girl child, because the distances are so long and they're thinking, am I safe to walk uh, uh, this distance to go to school and learn? So those are some of the, of the challenges that um, uh, we looked at as uh, uh, with my campaign team. So those are some of the projects that uh, we embarked on with my campaign team, where we did uh, schools around community communities that could only take maybe three classrooms near a community uh, a community and would actually ask for teachers those that are in those communities that uh, have graduated from uh, teaching uh, college and they haven't yet been uh, recruited by government to just help small children to go into those schools learn and maybe in their third grade they are able to walk long distances and they would move from those schools to the to the to the bigger schools so that is one of the things that really uh, motivated me to get into politics it's a life of a woman that is taking care of children mm. in a uh, as as an underprivileged uh, woman you know they go through a lot because look a mother loves her children a mother loves uh, what she brings to life and so um, it made me feel like if a mother is unable to provide for her children, they are uh, unable to see their children glow, you know, uh, and also attend or have a part of what is uh, uh, what other kids are uh, achieving. You know, you feel um, so bad for your children and you feel uh, you, you are failing. So if you could feel that, I think it's 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 a different, it's very depressing. So let me stand up because if my mother went through such a thing, I should be able to help that woman who is feeling the way my mother felt. And that is what actually motivated me to, to go into politics. And those are some of the initial experiences that I had. 
Wow, your journey into politics is extremely fascinating, Honorable Soveta. Wow, wow, wow. So I, I know campaigning can be extremely demanding and emotionally taxing. Could you tell us about your campaign journey and the feelings that you experienced when you were not elected for the position that you were campaigning for? And especially that you had given yourself to the community. You had given your time to these women. You were trying to do so much for the schools. What happened? How did you take that when it when it happened? Now, uh, campaign K is, Yes, of course, emotionally taxing, because can you imagine a situation where you are trying to fight for people uh, to better their lives? And these same people come back to you and tell you, look, if you want us to vote for you, you need to uh, probably do this for us. And they're asking for things that are out of uh, this world, impossible things. You know, sometimes uh, you find that uh, the, the electorates asking you to actually uh, build them things that you cannot build them because of course you are not in office and what they're asking for need huge funding okay and uh, it's very difficult of course uh, especially when you're not on the position to uh, solicit for funds or to look for funds to help the people in the community and so in your campaign you literally need to use your own resources. And so one, I was not in uh, a formal employment. Of course, I was in business, but of uh, also the type of politics that happened in Africa is that uh, if you are standing on an opposition ticket, it's very difficult for you to even continue with your business. Totally difficult or zero, if I must say. So I lost my business because I was standing against uh, the sitting in government. I was in opposition when I was aspiring as a member of parliament. And it was really um, uh, sad wow. because when you see what the community is going through and you're seeing what really they need, especially the women and the youth, uh, what they need for them to better their lives, you go there with your uh, uh, booklets and brochures of your manifesto and they're telling you, look, we are tired of reading uh, things like this. So really we want you to do this sort of a thing for us before we could vote for you. More like asking you to uh, bribe them um, in what they want. Maybe they want a project that you need to sponsor a community with and you do not have the resources to sponsor that uh, project. It's, it's, it's quite uh, draining because you can see what really they are going through. And if especially the, the incumbent is actually coming from uh, the ruling uh, uh, party and they're a member of parliament and they've got resources because of course they are on they are salaried and they're able to, to help out the community where need be and you are unable to do it. But you could see the wrong things that are happening in the community. And these people are coming back to you, throwing stone on you and telling you, look, doing this is casting stone. We don't think you can do it. We don't think you are able to, to do it, especially also uh, misogynists because they'll come out and tell you, yeah, a woman, what are you going to do in this community? How are you going to help these people? You know, those are some of the things that uh, we went through. Uh, I went through personally and it was really draining, but uh, because I understood that even when I was doing what I was doing, God was on my side. It's it's really um, a setback if you are trying to fight for people who uh, actually uh, bought into uh, political bias where they only want to work, where the electorates want to work with somebody who's got so much finances but uh, no manifesto, better manifesto uh, for the community. So it really drains you and uh, you there's nothing that you can do because remember in the game of politics it's a person that has a lot of following so you could have a lot of following but uh, tables could change right at the last minute uh, because you have nothing to offer those that want to have a little something uh, in terms of bribing them or vote buying 
which you cannot do because of course of integrity and uh, other things. You are an upright person and you don't want to go that way. People must just understand when you tell them this is the manifesto that I have. So it's either they buy into it or they go into the vote buying and vote for the person that has more resources. So really, as women in politics, we go through a lot of uh, uh, things that are very challenging, especially uh, funding. So if you don't have the funding, it's very difficult for you to pull through. However, I'm very proud of myself. I, I continue telling my campaign team to date that I'm very proud of them because they did the very best they could do, even in the little with with the little resources that we had, we managed to actually uh, accumulate a lot of uh, votes because people understood what we wanted and the vision that we had for them. Wow, must have been a challenging time, but I'm glad you're here, and you know we're we're now talking the way forward, which is really good. So, in the moments of doubt and disappointment, how did you navigate the uncertainty surrounding your political career? Did you think, you know, because sometimes, I mean, personally, there's some things that I've tried in my life and I failed at them, and I was just like, look, I don't want to do this anymore, or you know. How did you manage to just stay on track? Now, there's one thing, Kay, that my mother always taught me, and she always said, um, I'm your mother, okay, but uh, beyond me, there's God. And so you need to understand and appreciate uh, where one is coming from, um, coming from a Christian uh, background, uh, and uh -huh. very strong roots where Christianity is is concerned. Uh, both my my parents are actually Christians, and uh, in everything that I I, I did, um, of course, the Bible talks about doubt and what we should do when we are in doubt is is just to cast all our fears in God, and that's one thing that I did. And even when I felt okay, I feel like I'm not in the right direction. Uh, I'm trying to do the best for what I have to do and still had doubt. I still remember that, look, uh, God always speaks to us and he tells us do not be scared because I have not given you the spirit of fear, but spirit of uh, sound. Uh, and that is what was uh, carrying me forward. So even when I, I, I had doubt, I told myself, Lord, I'm casting my fears in you. And I know that everything that, whatever outcome of what I'm trying to achieve, if it does not succeed, you have said it should not succeed. And when you say this shall not succeed, you have another plan for me. So really I cast all my fears in God at all times of my uh, uh, steps in, the, in my political career. Amen. That's wonderful. Your decision to tend to prayer during challenging times is the best thing that anyone can actually do. I know some people tend to alcohol, they tend to do all kinds of destructive things to cover the pain. And I personally, being a Christian, I always tend to God whenever I'm going through any kind of challenge. I always tend to God. Like you said, God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of love, power, and a sound mind. And just being able to cast our fears in him and just say, Lord, I'm giving this to you and I'm going to move on. Just order my steps. Show me where I need to go. Be the light on my path. And that's the only thing that you can do. And I'm glad that's the direction that you took. And I know I remember you joining the Radical Faith WhatsApp group and participating in our 90 days of prayer. What drew you to this group? What were, what were your initial expectations when you joined? Well, uh, okay, when I joined that group, um, like I said, because I'm coming from a Christian background and anything that has to do with God is actually faced to me, is priority to me. And uh, my setbacks, of course, in politics uh, have taught me a lot of things. Um, of course, I know that whatever setbacks we go through as a Christian, you must not say that is the end of the world because of course the end of the world is when you go and meet your 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 God, you know? So really I hadn't met my 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 God like I'm, I'm, I'm dead and the spirit is with God. I was still here on earth and still living. And so I told God say, look, 
um, I haven't gone through this election, so what should I do? And Kay, as Christians, I think God speaks to us in so many ways. There's just that inner voice in you that really uh, guides you and drives you uh, to things that you actually don't understand yourself. Like you even ask yourself, must I really uh, take this step? You don't even know you should take that step. But always remember that that inner voice speaking to you is God. So you need to understand that voice that is talking to you and speak to that voice and co converse with that voice. Ask that voice, are you sure I should do this? And there's always positivity and energy driving to that voice and always follow that voice. And so when I didn't go through the election, I sat down and asked myself, what should I do now? Is this the end of my career? No. And the voice in my inner self was telling me, you need to, one, upgrade your education. Two, see how you can go um, uh, have a parallel uh, career. Are you going to go to school and just quit? You will not get employment. You will not uh, uh, make your business big, grow. You know, I had all those sorts of uh, uh, ideas coming through. And there were Actually, all of them, Kay, I must say, were very positive. And I understood that that was God speaking to me. And so I told myself in the year 2023, when I joined the group, I said, look, God is speaking to me. And this is the only way we can go. As sisters, we need to be together and see how we can encourage one another. And of course, the prayers that were coming from the group really, really helped me. They really helped me. I remember there was uh, one uh, prayer that was sent by yourself in the group. Um, I think that was in March. And that prayer was talking about um, you as a person actually telling God and talking to him as your own father. You know, imagine is actually seated on the chair of your, your your dad in the dining hall where you eat from in the dining room and God is seated there. You are seated on the side and you're telling him, look, I do not want anything that is going to obstruct my, my success. All these things that I'm going through, you have the power to move everything everything, every obstacle. And I refuse to fail. I will not fail because you, my God, are the one that blesses everybody. Everybody that has everything to do with success, it's you that was there for them. So why won't you be there for me? And that that prayer for me really helped me. And I kept playing it in the house in the morning when I wake up, I would cite, I actually cited it. I would speak to it. I would listen to it in my vehicle i would listen to it everywhere i am in my you know i'm doing my my shopping in uh, uh in a chain store my headsets would be on and i'm speaking to that prayer and i think that prayer really gave me strength and uh with that uh, the group has been very helpful and the moment that that prayer was uh, uh constant running through my head and speaking to god in that manner i had a lot of motivation and uh, because of that motivation, then I told myself, 2023 is a year of no obstacle. I'm going to make sure that I succeed in everything that I do. Because 2023 or so, I turned 40. And, you know, 40 is a year that people say it's a new year. So you actually progress in that year. And it's, 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 it's a time that you are born in every success, actually. And so I told myself, I've grown up. And I need to progress, begin to love myself as well, regardless of what I've gone through. Because sometimes you feel like when you fail to succeed in one thing, you hate yourself so much. You, you, tell, you call yourself all sorts of names. But this group really helped me because I never thought any little or belittled myself in any other way. I just told myself I'm a child of God and I need to succeed and there is no negativity that is going to pull me down and there is no obstacle in everything that I do. I just have to succeed in everything that I do. And I did that and that uh, has made me be where I am. And even when I was speaking to the people, okay, you will not believe that I would actually call big people in this country and just tell them, look, I didn't go through this election. So what next? You know, with that confidence, I would walk in any other office, you know, wearing a suit like I'm reporting for work. 
and I'll just tell them, look, I'm here. I didn't go through an election. Congratulations, you went through uh, uh, this uh, previous election, and now you are maybe a minister. You've got this uh, big position and everything. So what next for me? You know, speak casually but positively because you know that God has already opened the doors for you. And that is very, very important for everybody that feels like you are failing or you have failed. It is very important to have that positivity and a positive voice in everything that you say. Never let yourself down because it is only you, through God, that you have what you want. Wow. Wow. I do feel inspired. I preach it, sister. I, I feel now I'm just like, you know, just trying to take all this in. Oh, my God. God, you preaching to me. Wow. 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 I know the 90 days of prayer. Oh my God. It was such a transformative experience for all of us, you know, filled with numerous testimonies, including your own testimony. It was just amazing, you know, and sometimes when I send those messages on WhatsApp, sometimes you can just, you know, you're just like, oh, I'm just sending a prayer. And not oh, yeah. knowing the kind of impact those small voice messages can actually have in people's lives. Remember, there was another lady from South Africa who was giving her testimony. She also told me a similar story. She said, okay, you sent a message and I held on to that message and I kept praying. Uh, she graduated in South Africa as a pilot and she was just having her own challenges as well. They didn't want her to fly these big planes. She said, I'm able, I can do it just because I'm black. You think I can't do it, but with prayer God made a way for her and now she is a captain is somewhere in Namibia or Angola so God is so amazing just to hear you say even the confidence that you just got through the word of God and speaking it and that's why I always tell people this word of God you know it's not just literally looking at it you have to get hold of it mm -hmm. and let it work for you because the bible says the word of god is like fire it's like a hammer that hammers rocks into pieces so if you take the word of god and you begin hammering on that door you begin hammering on that problem ah before you know it the problem has already disappeared so wow wow such an amazing journey uh, i'm really just you know uh, so proud of you honestly so proud of you so proud of your mom i give her credit as well such a wonderful woman so it's incredible how prayer played a role in your life's transformation and leading to your appointment as a permanent secretary can, can you just share what happened how did you feel when you received that appointment and how has it reshaped your outlook on life and career aspirations now, uh, okay, there is something that uh, I must mention that uh, the 90 days of prayer was to me when I joined, like any other group that I'm always joining because look, I'm a Christian and this is a Christian group, so I must just join it and listen to my fellow sisters. I remember there were times that I would actually be in bed and it's time for me to join the, the, the group. And also at some point, you know, the devil works in so many ways, trying to obstruct you from so many things. I could actually not even join the, 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 the prayers in the evening, in the, in the night, uh, Zambian time, because my phone had the challenge. And also sometimes when I want to listen to what I have to listen to, even when I put my headsets, I could not hear anything. So I was forced now to leave my room, my bedroom, to go into uh, the, the the study room and switch on my, my laptop. I would connect from there and listen a little bit. Sometimes I find myself sleeping because of so much stress that I've had in the day and everything. Uh, so the 90-day uh, uh, prayer uh, was for me like any other group. But as I continued pushing myself to listen to what uh, people were actually talking about, I told myself, look, I've got my own experiences, which I need to also share with people. But after that prayer, like I mentioned earlier, everything felt so light. And not only that, because everybody was so worried, especially family members. They were so worried about me uh, because I was almost getting into a depression, thinking like, what should I do next? But I must say that I'm a very strong person. I would actually be very strong for them. 
because I saw many of them breaking because look, um, this is one of the highest positions that uh, uh, the highest positions of this land, if you are a member of parliament. And of course, my, my family was proud of me and they were very expectant that now they'll have a family member that has got that position and then boom, it doesn't come. But then I told myself, look, I got into this thing and put my family towards uh, this direction. And so I have to be strong for them. So I was very strong and also uh, with God uh, opening doors in these different offices and everything. Of course, also, I must say, Kay, sorry to mention, but I think also that uh, the Republican president has so much uh, faith in me and he understands my capabilities because he understands I'm one person that really, really loves to see uh, things work. I'm uh, um, go oriented. You know, I want to see uh, actions. I'm an action oriented person. Things must just move. And so because of my background and my uh, business background, he thought that I should be, uh, I would be one of the best people to help in this uh, ministry where I'm leading in the Ministry of Small and Medium Enterprise, which is basically business. business and that is to uh, uh, see that the SMEs are actually growing and developing in the country because he believes in the SMEs. And so he thought she's been there, she's done it uh, uh, so well, and she understands what uh, the small and medium enterprise businesses are actually uh, going through. Let us uh, try her. And when it came, it was not really a surprise to me because of the prayers that I was I was asking God. I told God, "Give me what I what you think I will do, and you know you, you yourself as my creator. I will not fail you in it." And so, when it came, it wasn't really a surprise because it's something that we're praying for in the ninety days. We're asking for jobs. We're asking for children. We're asking for marriages. We're asking for financial breakthrough, you know, okay. So really, it wasn't really a surprise, but I told myself, even when we're praying in the in the group, I'm sure we we're saying to ourselves, God will only give us that which we'll manage to do. So when it came, I was very excited because I knew that it came from God and God will see me through and will help me to execute my job and also do it uh, diligently. And so uh, I was very happy about it and it shaped me in a way that um, now I really appreciate God even more because look, okay, I think for me, everything that I've asked for from God comes a reality. And because I'm a believer, it actually strengthens my, my faith. And also I, how I wish that uh, other people could actually see from where I'm coming from and the experience that I've shared here. I'm, I'm actually a nobody, but God wants to always put me on the table uh, for the enemy to see me dining with, uh, uh, you know, uh, the kings and everything. It's not me. It's what I ask for from God. And God says, okay, you will do it. And because maybe I ask God to give me what he thinks I will uh, execute, something that will not be very difficult for me. I don't really ask for things that are, uh, 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 out of this world and also it's important one thing that i've learned from my experiences is that every time you do something do not do it for your uh, fame uh, but the love of the people that you have to help i think humanity uh, is important to leadership and if you want to take up a leadership position do not do it for fame do it because you want to do it to help another person it is very important and God will actually give you the wisdom and the knowledge to do uh, to take up your 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 job and execute your job well without any challenges. Well, of course, when I got this job, it's um, a third job in the country from the president. You have a minister, then a permanent secretary. So I'm actually number three, uh, and that is a very big position. And of course, so young because you have the elders that are actually reporting to you. Now, even when I started talking, I spoke about humility because God has given me this job. It doesn't give me the audacity to actually make uh, the people who are in, in the team uh, feel they're nobody and you're doing it for fame. It doesn't work like that. And God will bless us because of our humble beginning and also being humble in every step and level that you take up as a leader. 
it is very, very important for us Christians to always remember that when we're in these positions, it is not because uh, you have to show to the other um, um, uh, uh, world that uh, God has given you this position. You are his favorite. We are all God's favorites. And God gives time and chance to everybody. And I actually know that this is not a permanent position because God is still moving me to different positions, but it's how I'm going to do it to please him, to please his kingdom, that he'll be able to move me to even another level, even higher than where I am now. So some, some of these positions that we get are actually a test. Always be yourself. Always remember that this position is coming from God. Always ask for wisdom. Always ask for God to always keep you who, for who you are and not to change your character because this has come because you prayed for it and God has told you that I will give it to you because you've asked from me and I will ensure that you do it well. You can only do it well when you continue to be who you've been, even where you're coming from. Don't change. Very important, Kay. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Very, very powerful words of wisdom. Wow. Really, really enjoyed this interview with you, Honorable Sobeta. I must say that your appointment as a permanent secretary is truly remarkable. I wish you God's blessings and have a safe trip to Australia. I'm looking forward to having you again for a part two. And let me say again, congratulations on this appointment. Thank I you really very much. Thank you very much, Kay. I'm very happy that I'm here. And just to everybody that will listen to this um, uh, story, it is reality. Um, the, the things that I have been through as a girl child, um, seeing my mother cry, um, seeing my mother move from one level to another, um, going what we have gone through as uh, with my siblings and all, help coming from different people around us has really taught us a lot of things. And just to encourage that woman out there that is saying, I need to be in this marriage because of my children, where will I go and everything, kneel down, speak to God and tell God that he is your creator who created you and he gave you those children because he knew that you've got the strength to uh, uh, and the capabilities to take care of those those children. I will speak also um, on a story of a friend of mine that just lost uh, her ex-husband. And when we uh, mourning the husband, she said to me when I tried to tell her to be so strong because Kay, she was very sick and um, God touched her. And you will not believe that the sickness that she, she had, the troubles that she had, were actually moved. I, I don't want to say they were moved to the ex-husband, but that is the exact problem that the husband now began to have. And the husband went to be with the Lord. The ex-husband went to be with the Lord. And when I was trying to comfort her, she said to me, um, okay, so why is it that all the time I'm the one that has to be uh, strong, for my children, for my family and everything. So I said, you can't ask me that question. Ask God because God knows that you have to be strong because he knows that you are the strong person. So do not always tell yourself that I cannot do it. God always gives us the strength because he knows our character. He knows us before we were born. So he knows what we are capable of doing. So we cannot question God to say, how will I do this? He knows why he's doing what he's doing. All we have to ask him to do is to continue watching over us and continue to give us the wisdom and the knowledge to continue living and to take care of that which he has asked us to take care of. So the women out there who feel I cannot leave my husband, an abusive husband, because I don't know where to begin from, leave and pray to God and ask God to be a husband of uh, yourself, a father to your children and everything shall be well because you are better off to actually be alone 
be happy. Your children are happy to see you glow. They don't want to see you cry all the time. Uh -huh. So don't hesitate to actually hold on to the robe of Jesus Christ and ask him to do the better things that he can do for you. Because if he can do it for my mom, and I'm here today from a nobody, okay, from a nobody to where I am today, he can do it for everybody because we are all his favorite children. So there's nothing like, no, uh, I've had my friends sometimes call me and they make fun of me and they say, hi, the one with the uh, princess blood, you know, they, they make fun of me <laughs> like that. I just tell them, no, it's not like that. Yeah. We can all do it, but God <laughs> has given right. us different, yeah, God has given us different uh, 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 directions in life. So it's not that I'm God's favorite. We are all God's favorites. And all we have to do is stay focused and listen to that inner uh, spirit because we all have the spirit in us. We just have to speak to it that all the time. Perfect. So do not hesitate to move and move in the in, in the direction of God. He is always there for you. Uh, stay strong. Uh, do not hesitate to move on. Just move on if you have to move on. God definitely has a plan for everybody and there has a plan for you. That is so true. The Bible says he has great plans to prosper us and not to harm us. And so not his to plans, harm us. Yes. His plans never change. You know, this is my favorite scripture. Always go back to it and say, God has great plans for my life. But anyway, oh thank God. you so much to our audience. I hope you found this episode as inspiring as I did. I mean, this episode is loaded and I know it will be trending on social media. So remember, even in the face of challenges, setbacks and satanity, Prayer can lead us to remarkable transformation. It is prayer that can make a way where there seems to be no way. It is the powerful God that we serve, the mighty God that is able to make a way in our lives, even when you're about to give up. Like the Honorable Suveta said, hold on to the robe, hold on to the hem of Jesus, hold on to God. The Bible says, ask and it shall be given unto you. So ask means you have to take the first step. You're not waiting on God. God is waiting for you to ask. So today I encourage you to ask God for that thing that you have been, you know, just going through and wondering how it's going to work out. Ask God for wisdom. Ask him for guidance. Ask him to guide you. What do I need in this situation? Where do I need to go? So as we conclude today's episode, I want to leave you with this thought never underestimate the miracles that can happen when you place your trust in god and when you pray until next time stay blessed share and like and subscribe so that you don't miss our upcoming inspiring stories and remember you have to come back for part two we haven't finished um please just come back you don't want to miss part two thank you so much honorable subeda have a wonderful trip and god bless you Thank you.